Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to wind off our series on Combined Science Paper 2 that was written in November 2021. Sorry for not uploading it on time, I was not around, I had traveled for holiday. Continue to follow the tutorials, they are so helpful for your visions. Thank you who had subscribed to my channel. If you haven't yet, just click subscribe so that you are always up to date on all the all-level revisions which I upload on this channel. So in the final exams, candidates are required to answer N2 questions in this section on the separate answer sheet provided. Um, we are going to answer all the questions as we are doing our revision. So number 13A, part one, is reading. A two ampere electric heater was connected to a 110 volts supply for one hour. Calculate the cost of running the electric heater for one hour if one unit cost 50 cents. In order to calculate the cost of running the electric heater, for one hour, we need to determine the total energy consumed by the heater. The formula to calculate energy in kilowatt hours is power in kilowatts times time in hours. So we are going to say power in kilowatts times time in hours. We are given power in um, amperes. We need to convert that power to kilowatts. So we are going to say power in amperes times voltage in volts over 1000 in order to get the power in kilowatts. So the power in amperes is two and we multiply by voltage. We are given our voltage is 110 volts. So we say 110 over 1000. Let us punch on the calculator. 2 times 1, sorry, 2 times 110 over 1000. Uh, we are getting 0 0.22. This is um, the power in kilowatts. Now that we have calculated the power, we now need to calculate the cost. In order to calculate the cost, we say energy in kilowatt hour times cost per unit. So energy in kilowatt hour is 0 0.22 times cost per unit. We are given that the cost per unit is 0 0.50, 50 cents. So we are going to punch this on the calculator. 0 0.22 times 0 0.5. We are obtaining 0 0.11 dollars, which means 11 cents. That is going to be the cost of running electric heater for one hour. Part two, state one limitation of the Ohm's law. First, I'm going to explain what is Ohm's law. It is a law stating that electric current is proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. So the limitation of Ohm's law is it is applicable only for linear conductors. Another limitation of Ohm's law is it is not applicable if temperature is not constant. Let us move on to part three. Name the two cables on a two-pin plug. First, I'm going to explain what is a two-pin plug. It is a type of electrical plug that is commonly used for small appliance and electronic devices. It consists of two metal pins that are designed to fit into corresponding slots in a power outlet or socket. So this is an example of a 
two pin plug so the two cables on a two pin plug we have a watch or a life and the other is called the neutral the neutral blade is large blade and what or a live blade is small. Let us move on to B part one. Outline how a lightning conductor should be installed for it to protect a building. So a lightning conductor is a metal rod installed on a structure and connected to the ground below it to protect it against lightning damage. Let me repeat again to define what is a lightning conductor. It is a metal rod installed on a structure and connected to the ground below to protect it against lightning damage. So the lightning rod is placed on the topmost corner where the lightning rod is mounted on a mounting base and connected to a thing road or a ground road through a copper cable. Lightning absorbed by the lightning road is diverted through this path by avoiding any damage to the structure. Let us move on to B part two. State N1 myth on lightning. So I'm going to explain what is a myth first. It is a widely held false belief or idea. So uh, one myth on lightning is lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Um, we are also told that lightning only strikes the tallest objects. That is a myth. And also you are told that if you are outside in the storm, lie flat on the ground. That is a myth again. This was a complete solution for number 13. On number 13A part 1, we are supposed to calculate the cost of running the electric heater for one hour if one unit costs 50 cents. So first we need to calculate the power in kilowatts. We are going to say power in amperes times voltage in volts over 1000 in order to get 0 0.22 kilowatts hours. And then to find the cost, we are now going to say NH in kilowatts hour times cost per unit, which is 0 0.22 times 50 cents. We are going to get 11 cents. This is the cost for running electric heater for one hour. And then on part two, we're supposed to state one limitation of the Ohm's law. It is only applicable for linear conductors. And then on part three, we're supposed to name the two cables in a two pin plug. We have hot or alive and also neutral uh, cables. And then on B part one, we're supposed to outline how a lightning conductor should be installed for it to protect a building. So lightning rod is placed on the topmost corner where the lightning rod is mounted on a mounting base and connected to a thing rod or a ground rod through a copper cable. Lightning absorbed by lightning um, is going to be diverted through this path by avoiding any damage to the structure. And then on B part two, we're supposed to state in one myth on lightning. When we are saying a myth, we mean a widely held false belief or idea. So it is a myth that lightning never strikes to twice on the same place. And also it is a myth uh, that if you are outside in the storm, you should lie flat on the ground. So this was all about number 13. Let us now move on to the next question, which is number 14. Number 14A, part one, describe the operation of a direct current DC motor. A direct current motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. 
It is a fairly simple electric motor that uses electricity and a magnetic field to produce a torque, which turns the rotor and hence gives mechanical work. In an electric motor, operation is based on a simple electromagnetism. When a current carrying conductor is placed in an external magnetic field, it will experience a force. Due to this force, torque is produced, which rotates the rotor of a motor and hence a motor runs. Direction of mechanical force is given by Fleming's right, uh, sorry, left hand rule. It says that a current carrying conductor receives force when placed in a magnetic field. So that is the summary of how a DC motor works. And then on part two, we are supposed to state N3 factors that affect the speed of rotation of the coil. So the speed of rotation is affected by the strength of the magnetic field. Uh, it is also affected by the number of turns of a coil, the surface area of the coil, and the current strength in the coil. And then on 14b, we are supposed to state N2 uses of solar systems. So solar system is the sun and everything that orbits around it. We use the solar system to cook food, to heat the water, uh, for electricity generation, uh, for lighting, for water treatment, and also for hydrogen production. So that was all about number 14. Let, us, let me give the summarized answers on number 14. So these were the summarized answers for number 14. On number 14A part 1, we're supposed to describe the operation of a direct current motor. So in summer, a direct current motor is the one that conveys electrical energy into mechanical energy. Uh, so it is a fairly simple electric motor that uses electricity and a magnetic field to produce a torque, which turns the rotor and hence gives mechanical work. In, in an electric motor, operation is based on simple electromagnetism. When a current carrying conductor is placed in an external magnetic field, it will experience a force. Due to this force, torque is produced which rotates the rotor of motor and hence a motor runs. Direction of mechanical force is given by Fleming's left hand room. It asserts that a current carrying conductor receives force when placed in a magnetic field. Then on a part two, we're supposed to state in three factors that affect the speed of rotation of the coil. So these are the factors that affect the, the speed of rotation of the coil, the strength of the magnetic field, the number of turns of a coil, the surface area of the coil, the current strength in the coil. And then on uh, part B, we're supposed to state N2 uses of solar system. So solar system is the sun and everything that orbits around it. We use the solar system to cook the food, to heat the water, to generate electricity, to give the lights uh, in water treatment and also in hydrogen production. Uh, we are supposed to just state N2 uses from all these uses I have stated. So that was all about number 14. Let us move on to the final question which is number 15. Number 15A, a boy pushes a wheelbarrow with a force of 25 newtons against a frictional force of 7 newtons. On 15A part 1, 
we are supposed to define the term friction. So friction is defined as the resistance offered by the surface that are in contact when they move past each other. Let me repeat again. Friction is defined as the resistance offered by the surfaces that are in contact when they move past each other. And then on 15A part 2, we are supposed to, cal to calculate the resultant force on the wheel bar. So in order to calculate the resultant force on the wheel bar, we say applied force minus frictional force. So in this case, we are applying 25 newtons and the frictional force is 7 newtons. So in order to have the resultant force, we are going to say 25 newtons minus 7 newtons in order to get 18 newtons. And then on part B, we are supposed to state N2 applications of friction. So we apply friction when we drive a vehicle on a surface. We also apply friction when applying brakes to stop a moving vehicle. When we are brushing our teeth, we are applying the friction. And also when we are ironing a shade, we are also applying friction. And also when we are lighting, lighting matchsticks, we are applying the friction. So there are so many applications of frictions. In this case, we are supposed to just state two applications of friction. Let us move on to number 15, part C. Uh, we are having a fig 15.1, which is showing a ball, which is operated by a lever. The load is uh, 120 newtons. On C, part 1, we are supposed to state the principle of moments. Principle of moments state that when board is in equilibrium, or a balance, the total clockwise moment about a point is equal to total anti-clockwise moment about the same point. Let me repeat again. Principle of moments said that when board is in equilibrium or a balance, the total clockwise moment about a point is equal to total anti-clockwise moment about the same point. Let us move on to C part 2. We are supposed to calculate the minimum effort required to operate this pump. So let me explain what happens to a lever. A lever has two arms. We have a load arm or the output arm, which is a portion of lever that is directly connected to the load. So our load is 120 newtons. This arm from this portion to this portion is known as load arm because it is directly uh, connected to the load. And then we have the effort arm or arm of applied force. It is a portion of lever to which we apply the effort or input force. So this is the... Um, effort arm from this point to this point. So first we are going to calculate the mechanical advantage. In order to calculate the mechanical advantage, we say effort arm divided by load arm. So the effort arm is 60 centimeters divided by 10 centimeters. We are going to get our mechanical advantage as six. So we are saying Mechanical advantage is equals to effort arm over load arm. So the effort arm we are having 60 centimeters and then uh, the load arm we are having 10 centimeters which means that the mechanical advantage is 6. Now we want to calculate the effort. In order to calculate the effort, we are going to say load over mechanical advantage. 
we are given that the load is 120 newtons. So we say 120 newtons divided by mechanical advantage, which is 6. So 6 into 6, 1. 6 into 12, 2. 6 into 0, 0. So we are having our effort is 20. It is 20 newtons. And then on part three, we are supposed to state the effect of reducing the length of effort arm. If we reduce the length of effort arm, it gives a lower mechanical advantage. So the more the effort, uh, the more. So let me repeat again. If we reduce the length of the effort arm, it gives a lower mechanical advantage. More effort is needed to move a load a greater distance. And then finally on part 4, we are supposed to state how friction can be reduced in the pump. And we, can use, we can reduce the friction by using lubricants. So this was the complete solution for number 15. On 15A part 1, we are supposed to define the term friction. Friction is defined as the resistance offered by the surfaces that are in contact when they move past each other. And then on part two, we're supposed to calculate the resultant force on the wheel bar. So in order to calculate resistance, resultant force, we say applied force minus frictional force. We applied 25 newtons and the frictional force was 7 newtons. So we're saying... 25 newtons minus 7 newtons in order to get 18 newtons. And then on B, we're supposed to state into applications of friction. Friction is applied when we are driving a vehicle on a surface, when we are applying brakes to stop a moving vehicle, when we are brushing our teeth, when we are ironing the clothes, and when we are lighting the matchsticks. So um, in, there are so many applications of frictions. We are just supposed to state in two of these applications. And then on part C, we're supposed to state the principle of moments. It states that when board is in equilibrium or balanced, the total clockwise moment about a point is equal to total anti-clockwise moment about the same point. And then on part three, part two, we're supposed to calculate uh, the minimum effort required to operate a pump. So we need to calculate mechanical advantage first. We are going to say effort arm divided by load arm in order to get mechanical advantage of six. And then to get effort, we say load over mechanical advantage which is 120 newtons over 6 to get 20 newtons. And then on part 3, we're supposed to state the effect of reducing the length of effort arm. If we reduce the length of effort arm, it gives a lower mechanical advantage. More effort is going to be needed to move the load a greater distance. And then... Uh, on part 4, we're supposed to state how friction can be reduced in the pump. We can reduce friction by using um, lubricants. This marks uh, the end of our revision on the paper that was written in November 2021. Uh, this is Eve signing out.